in terms of the racialization of the healthcare system. So that was in what you were talking about before. I was really interested in this because it seems like a wicked problem to me when you were citing the research in terms of who's going to be more susceptible. And, and you, you were talking about American hospitals where they got to the point they're overwhelmed, they're in a position of battlefield triage. And so certain people based on their demographic, I mean, just you use the example of men and women, you know, that women, because two X chromosomes produce progesterone and, and estrogen, uh, may increase ACE2 levels and be protective. But the point was that you noted, or the research, the epidemiological research or the critical fatality rates noted that Black Americans, Hispanic, people in minority groups were at higher risk of fatality to COVID. I mean, I wondered whether you're at this difficult point at triage where you make a decision about someone and it ends up being a racialized decision. Because you have a white woman and you've got a black man who's got diabetes, potentially. No, I don't think you don't need to take into account race or gender, I don't think, to make forecasts. I mean, battlefield triage, which thankfully we avoided in this country. To my knowledge, there was, in fact, no situation in which someone was taken off a ventilator and someone else was put on it. There were cases in Italy where this happened. There was a a case of an elderly priest, actually, who insisted that he, he be taken off a ventilator. And I think he died and that the ventilator be given to a younger person when Lombardy collapsed in February of 2019. But to my knowledge, there were no such cases, but many people were talking about it. And everything I saw said that those decisions would, of course, be made on clinical grounds. That is to say, the likelihood of survival if resources were scarce. And people were outraged by this, but I thought that partly reflected an inability in the United States to imagine that resources were not limitless. You know, we're so used to being such a rich country and deluded ourselves into thinking that there is never any scarcity or allocation of course, there is, you know, mm. s- fancy hospitals are not built randomly across our yes. country. But I don't think we face that. On the race thing, it's unclear. So this is a statistical issue. If you take into account the risk of chronic disease and uh, obesity and income and, uh, and, and poverty, after accounting for those qualities, let's say black people might be no more likely to die than white people. Actually, I have to go further back. There are two distinct issues. There's the probability of becoming infected and then conditional on being infected, the probability of dying. So there was no doubt that race played a role in the probability of acquiring the virus, for example, because of differences in occupation. You know, on average, let's say white people were more able to work at home than black people. And therefore, black people were out and about and more likely to encounter the virus. That's the first step. The second step is given that you're infected, are you or are you not more or less likely to die compared to other infected people of a dissimilar ethnic background? And there the question becomes, well, does that relate intrinsically somehow to your your race or ethnicity, or does that instead relate to, you know, your body size or your illnesses and so on? And this in turn goes into an even more deep and complicated question, which is how you see the causal role of race and ethnicity in health. Because let's say I say to you, after accounting for whether someone is obese and has diabetes, being black does not affect whether they die from COVID. Someone else might say, well, no, that's how being black causes you to die from COVID. It is because you're black that you're more likely to be mistreated or be in a situation in which you gain weight or whatever else. So it's not fair for you to control for that. This has to do with something called the causal model that you have of how race and ethnicity might affect health outcomes. And I teach a whole lecture on this in, uh, in my undergraduate class in public health. Anyway, that's yeah. too much detail, I think, for what you're interested in. I'm interested in that because I think it is a, it's like I said, it's a wicked problem because I understand, like I, you know, did my undergraduate in psychology. And so I understand models that control for extraneous variables. But the issue would be, and critical race theorists would say that it, you know, the, the higher death rate is evidence of a racialized health system because if black people or Hispanic people or, or other immigrants are at higher risk of diabetes, obesity or cardiovascular system, that is due to an intergenerational issue in terms of yes. uh, oppression or, uh, or stigma and d- discrimination. I mean, you can see how complicated that is. Yes, but I think you have to unpack each step of that reasoning. For example, it's quite possible that in the coming months, we may find that being a Republican or being a white evangelical is a risk factor for dying from COVID. In fact, we're already seeing that because vaccine uptake is so low in those groups. In other words, the people refusing the vaccine, we made a big push to make sure that we did not exclude minorities in our society. 
and poor people, which is correct. By the way, not all whites are rich and all blacks are poor, right? I mean, yeah. That's not how it works. Yes, but of course, of course. We, we made a push in our society to make sure that we didn't have allocation of vaccines that preferentially advantaged any particular ethno-racial or economic group. Rightly so, we made such a push. But some of the risk groups are not just defined in the ways that you might think. Right now, we have a problem where there's under-vaccination among white evangelical Christians and Republicans in rural areas. And my argument would be we should make an equal push to try to reach those people. All of us, I care about my fellow citizens. I don't just care about my fellow citizens who share my political views. I care about my fellow citizens and I care about human beings and their lives. And I weep for the people who think that the vaccine is a kind of conspiracy of Bill Gates to put in you know, a nano chip that monitors you. Those people are deluded and we need to reach them and help them to see that it's in their interest to be vaccinated. And incidentally, in this case, we all benefit when more people are vaccinated. It's in our collective interest to vaccinate as many people as possible.